All right. Yo, welcome to Red River Podcast. Uh, today, I got to do this episode myself. You know, uh, Brian, my my co-host, his uh, he had something to do with his kid, like a school thing and stuff like that. So you know how that goes. Um, man, I get to talk to Alaska Adams, a.k.a. Tim. Um, you know, I, I, I know you through Hangar 18. Right. So mm-hmm. our 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 Twitter. Well, I mean, my friend in real life, I don't know if you've met Joe, but Joe Sango has, has been in, in on a, a shitload of our episodes. Uh, and he was like, man, you really got to like talk to this dude, Alaska on Twitter. And I was like, <laughs> Alaska. I was like, yeah, that sounds fucking familiar. And I was like, yo, I'm like, that dude is from Hangar 18. Like, so growing, I don't want to say growing up because I was in, like in my 20s. Um, I know you from Adam's family and I know you from Hangar 18 and Def Jux and all that other stuff, man. So, uh, w- welcome. Thank you. So wait, is Joe, is Joe the dude from beyond? No. So, uh, I know, but okay, I, 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 yeah, no, I know, I know no. Kevin, I know Kevin from beyond. Okay. So I meant outburst. Outburst. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause he told me, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, he, he knows like hardcore stuff. And I was like, get the hell out of here. So no, a little bit of, like, I'm, I'm a tourist. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm not heavy in it. Me too. So yeah. like when all my friends were like listening to that, I was like more of like an indie rock hip hop guy, man. Mm-hmm. So like musically, but like I grew up like I'm 46. So I grew up like just at that time for MTV, like all the hair metal videos Oh, yeah. So like I bought in. I was like, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, watching like, you know, Adam Curry, you know, right. everyone was like Herb and him, but I'm like eight. I'm like, I don't know the difference between him and like, you know, anyone else, you know? Yeah, for real. So uh and I love I just love anything with a hook. You know, I think yeah. I think early hair bands really taught me the importance to me or my ears about melody. Mm-hmm. Where I think like hardcore, um, which I love, like I'll listen to Minor Threat, Black Flag, all that other shit. Right. You know, it's more of like the the intensity of it, and and the melody is just almost non-existent or like yeah. secondary. Yeah, it's it's like riff and screaming. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. If you're lucky, you're a good drummer. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, oh, you need that good drummer. So, yeah. uh, but I, I I have similar. Sorry, I don't I didn't mean no, to cut you off. No, I, yeah, let's do it. I'm like we're we're probably. We're pretty similar in age. I'm a little older than you, but like I was big on it. I still listen to hair metal. Like I still yeah. go back to the hair metal. I'm like, this shit fucking bangs. Yeah, I yeah. That's you, cool. You know what I post? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I posted okay. today? I posted a poison deep track on my friend's like fucking wall. So I still fuck nice. with it. I just, nice. uh, you know, sometimes like I'll, I'll get in the car. My girlfriend's like eight years younger. And any, you know, sometimes I'll put on. Usually in my car, I'll do Spotify, but she has like satellite mm-hmm. and like, I'll like rock, like, you know, I'll, I'll like, I want to hear Hair Nation and stuff. Go to Hair Nation. Yeah. Go and to I, Ozzy's yard, see what's going there. Then check out Hair Nation. Yeah. So like, you know, <laughs> like, and, and sometimes she's like, you know, she'll be like fucking with me. Like, you know, she's like, oh, I like Mr. Big or whatever the hell. And other times she's just like, this is like not good whatsoever. But then yeah. we, we have There's like, we have that disconnect too with like hip hop, you know, um, she man it's interesting right so like she's not really into like that boom bap you know and 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 i'm gonna take action bronson as an example okay i loved when he came out with like dr lector i don't know if you're familiar with all right so the album he did with static selecta well done like crazy like that's that's when i was like this dude is the shit and then she wasn't really into it until he did Mr. Wonderful, which was like that super like crossover. And that's when he like, yeah, he's, he's like, from now on, I'm like rapping on beat on fucking flutes. And that's it. You know, that's it. Yeah. 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 I'm becoming the action Bronson that people talk about and mean now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just like I, I, <laughs> I, uh, the disconnect with, with her, like I said, it's, it, but, but there's something to be said about that pop. Like he did something where she listened, you know. So like, I guess grudgingly, I was just like, ah, whatever. Like I don't care. That's, I mean, that's cool. I like some of those songs, but it's like I want to yeah. listen to like you know. And then Mayhem Loren, you know, snuck in there and started like putting out some like the best albums from New York. Yeah, for, sure. for real. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have a fourteen-year-old daughter, so it's like I hear a lot of stuff that she plays, and I'm like, I would have never tracked it down on my own, but I'm like, oh, that's a dope song. 
Interesting. You know, like like she got me like I, I love I loved Out Future when they first came out. Yeah. But she got me back into Tyler, like just doing like road trips with her. And she's like, let me play my songs. And I'm like, all right. And it's like, I was like, who's that? Tyler. Who's that? Tyler. It's like, oh, all right. I need to check out Tyler again. You know, like I, love I would much rather hear poppy shit than like like dude ciphering over like terrible beats and poorly mixed music at this point in my life. But I mean, like that was that was your thing though. Cause I, I think it I, was. You know, like that was your like yeah. your universe. Did you ever watch? I think so. Netflix did that that um that hip hop evolution thing, and they oh, did yeah. they did the episode where yeah. they they did like the New York like fucking like New York Rican type shit, oh, yeah. and then they did the flip side in Cali with that health food store. Yeah, the good life. Yeah, right. So like, I mean, like for the most part, that was kind of like where you came up, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the the New York Rican scene was completely where I came up. Um, you know, I, I mean, you know, I started rapping amongst friends and stuff before that, but my first show was, um, at this place called, uh, El Puente High School in Williamsburg. And it was, um, my homie, Billy G from Queens brought me down. Like he had been on stretch and Bobito and stuff like that. So he was a big deal. And, um, he brought me and a couple of my other friends down and we just did like, we each did a verse, but it was an event hosted by Bobito Garcia that yeah. was like. There was the event was called All That, right? So he's joining us. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the the um event was called All That at New Eureka Poets Cafe. It was put on by this guy, Rocky La Montaigne. And they did a a fundraiser basically at El Puente High School to like help the kids raise funds. And it was like that was the first time I ever performed. But it was like and instantly I was in that scene. Like I was there every I think it was the second Thursday or third Thursday of every month. I was just there every Thursday. And like, so one of the things that I will say, what's up, Brian? You made it. <laughs> uh, what, Nightmare. What, what are the things that, that that I, you know, to to move forward, to fast forward a little bit, and then we'll go back. Mm-hmm. When I when I first saw Hangar 18, uh, like, especially mixed into the definitive Jux universe, you guys really had like the essence, though. You know, mm-hmm. where like Aesop Rock, like you, he's like the Dillinger escape plan of hip hop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's so, like, this, like, dense thing, and, like, you either, like, get it or you don't. You guys had a more, like, between you and, like, S.A. Smash, you guys had, like, a hip-hop thing going for sure. And what I loved was, like, you I you just stuck out to me because, like, you were, like, fucking killer. Like, you you were just killer. Like, you, you were just an MC's MC. And mm-hmm. even, like, live before, like, I even knew who you were, like, um, the back and forth. It was, like, Wind and Breeze. Was that the other dude? Wind and Breeze, yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay, I remember. <laughs> yeah, <you got> it. <laughs> um, But, yeah, man, so that, that that's what I remember. So, like, growing up, like, you know, uh, you said that that was the first time you performed. Like, what were some of, like, the hip-hop records or, like, MCs that you just looked at and you're like, I think I could do this? So, the two... Like when I first started listening to rap, I never thought I could do it because it was like Rakim, Big Daddy Kane. And I was like, you know, a scrawny, like 13 year old kid, like sitting in my parents' driveway, shooting basketballs, pretending I was on Seton Hall. Right. So I was like, I can never be as cool as those dudes. But then Special Ed came out. Um, So like, you know, he was like a 16 year old kind of nerdy kid, but still like very cool. Like he was like a cool, like had a cool about him and he was really stylistic and he was cool with his words. So that was like the first one. I was like, Oh, maybe and then De La Soul came out and they were just mm. like real regular, like suburban dudes from Long Island, you know, dressed like everybody I knew dressed. Um, and then the one that really made me think I could do it was uh, Dell, the funky homo sapiens. I wish my brother George was here. Cause I was like, nice. that my life, you know, like I'm taking public transit. I don't have money. My friends are all stoners. We're all stoners, you know? And it was like, I could try it. I don't know if I could do it as good, but I could try it at least. Like there's, there's a lane for just like regular ass dudes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is true. And and it's like, I was trying to like think of like the, the point where hip hop kind of broke off. Right. Cause I feel like you mentioned De La Soul and like, like when did an underground start becoming a thing? Like I'm, I don't even really know. Right. Cause like at first, yeah. like it was just like this, like everything was together from mm-hmm. like tribe to like Jay-Z, like it didn't even matter. And then somewhere along the yeah. line of like maybe like organized confusion or like Black Star, like yeah. things just went mm-hmm. like separately. Like, do you remember like that 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 disconnect kind of? 
I would say like even Black Moon, like as early as Black Moon, like their their whole sort of style and motif was very different than where like the industry started going. So I think it was like that type of thing. It was I think it was more the industry going in a direction that created the underground. Interesting. Yeah, you're right. People that were like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I want to do like, you know, I want to make hip hop music that I've always loved. Um, so I think it I think it was that. I think the sort of Sway and Tech on the West Coast and then Bobito and Stretch on the East Coast mm. sort of creating those areas where there was suddenly like, you know, kind of like I guess how like alternative and punk blew up on college radio. There was now an an avenue for people making sort of weirdo rap music or independent rap music that wasn't going to get picked up on the radio. You know, there's the people that were connoisseurs were still like out there trying to to champion it. And I think like there was people like that doing those kind of things. I think for me, that's where it is. Like that's what I always think of. Like when I think of indie, that makes I think sense. Of like and Bob. But then like realistically, you could look at like No Limit, like No Limit Records, mm. the indie record label, Luke. Sure. Down south is an indie record label. They're all indie. So there's like indie and then there's like the underground indie, like sort of like skate punk kids. You know, I think like that whole style of scene. Yeah, the skate punk thing really embraced it because like me and me and Lang and and probably you, like we we, you know, we were at Lollapalooza, we were like at all mm -hmm. that other shit. And like certain certain festivals just embraced hip hop as, as well as like yeah. skate culture. So that's why yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think Cypress Hill and Wu Tang like really like took off because those kids are like, oh, this is we want this, you know, and uh, I, it like tried to right like there's certain certain things that like suburban people just like were like, yo, we yeah. fuck with this like completely, yeah. you yeah. know, uh, yeah. and, and and also you know like I wonder if you remember, um we were like i was so like anything that you because you mentioned no limit anything mm -hmm. that didn't have that east coast flavor like i was like yeah. at 16 17 18 i just wasn't fucking with it until i yeah. heard like uh souls of mischief right like i i just yeah. had that that thing where it's like I, I don't know what it was like now i could let you now you know i could hear who's a juvenile you know back that thing up and i'm like that's pretty fucking good right now i don't know what it is now it hits a little differently but like were you that way too like were, were you kind of like uh or were you like still advanced so i was when when i was younger like i was into everything there was a period where i was into everything like sort of like that 88 era of like young tv raps where everything they played was great it didn't matter where it was from like I, I was into that. So I, I really love like the LA scene, like, you know, NWA, Ice Cube, Easy E, uh, Compton's Most Wanted, like um, Above the Law, WC in the Mad Circle. Like I loved all that stuff. Um, it was anything that was kind of alien to my existence. I love yeah. that just, you know, I went towards mm -hmm. that. Um, and then like, you know, eventually hearing like Souls of Mischief, that kind of blew my mind. Like De Dell and Souls of Mischief were big. Um, big. Organized Confusion was big. Far side. Far side, yeah, like all that, like yeah. very sort of technical and artistic, and talking about things in a different way. Like the first organized confusion record, like you know, "Walk into the Sun," "Hypnotical Gases," like all those songs are just like there's no other music like that ever in any genre. You know, like that. I mean, maybe they like, were they were next know. level, right? Yeah. Like like you know, Pharaoh to this day, like the the stuff yeah, that he yeah. says is like he's still like just crushes shit oh yeah um and you know you could put on stress and and like like those records and they and they were around maybe for like a couple of years right i don't feel like they were yeah, around for like that long three, i think they did three records so i think the first one equinox came out, like, equinox um stress the extinction agenda and then the self-titled yeah. which i think came out like 91 maybe wow um so they, they were around for a little while um you know oc came through them so there was that guy as well um, you know, it, it was like, there was all these like feeder systems as well. Like of people like having good crews. Like when you think of like, now you think of a crew, it's like the hanger ons and they're not really that good. <laughs> yeah. but back then you had to be good to be <laughs> crew. Right. So like organized brought in OC, like, um, Dayla, Jungle Brothers brought in Dayla, Dayla brought in Tribe, Tribe brought in Black Sheep, Black Sheep brought in Chiali. Like it was, you know, this sort of like lineage yeah. that was there just like creating amazing music. 
And now Allison Chains brought in every terrible band on, on the planet. There you, there you know, go. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're a boy band. <laughs> um, so, you know, to, I mean, we could do this all day mm -hmm. long, but I, I really want to know the formation of, of Adam's family and sure. ba basically like, uh, cause like I said, when, when, when I first saw Hangar 18, I didn't really know much about Adam's family other than yeah. you guys were uh, aligned with Cannibal Locks. And obviously the cold vein for people like me was like huge, you know, by like 98, 99, I started going to fat beats in the city. I started sure, like yeah. digging through stuff. You know, I, I discovered nonfiction, which was mind melting to me, you know? Uh, so like, tell me a little bit of, of like Adam's family into Hangar 18. So, um, so Hangar 18 was originally a group. Like Hangar 18 was me, Wind and Breeze, and uh, this dude, uh, Angel Falcone, um, who went by Analytic. So it was the three of us. And um, we would start going to shows and stuff. And it was like, at New York and there was all these crews, right? So it was like, there was We Be Foolish, which was like Yishwan Sire and those dudes. Um, there was a crew called House of Reps, which was this dude like Jedi, Son of Spock, um, AL, but basically just tons of big crews, right? And we wanted to be part of a crew when we didn't have anyone. But we every now and again, we'd hear people yell, Adam's fam. Adam's fam. So one night we were um, at the New Eurekan and we were just like rapping in the bathroom with this dude that had like a shower cap on and a toothbrush. Uh, <laughs> and he went by Osiris Cloud and he was crazy. Like he's on, he's on, I think, um, might be a Mike Molest. He's on like one of the early Adam's family songs, but only like one appearance. He's the guy that drew the Can Ox cover. Oh, cool. Um, so he came up with like Vast and Bortle. They went to um, Washington Irving uh, High School together. And we were just rapping with him. He's like, yeah, you guys got to be an Adams family. And it was like really that simple. So like, he was like, you got to be an Adams family. The next week there was a show at this place. I think it was called Metro. And it was like, uh, it was nonfiction, natural elements, the juggernauts and company flow. Ah, Pretty man. Much everybody, man. everybody in the scene was there. And it was like, that's where we met the rest of them. So we met like Cryptic One. He was in a group called Center of the Web. We met like Vast and Vortal. Uh, we met this dude, Genesis. There was like 30 dudes in Adam's family at the time. Wow. And, um, so it was like, we just wanted to be like part of something like that. Like, you know, we felt like outsiders. We suddenly had a crew and it was like, okay, like we're we're in now. So Adam's family went like that for a little while. And then people just kept adding people to the group. Um, there was one time when like apathy was in the group. Um, I was just going to mention apathy because yeah. he did the song with... Uh with Pharaoh Monch. I was going to be like, oh yeah, yeah. That, that, for some reason that popped Ooh. in my head and stuff, but yeah, yeah Ap Ap crazy. Yeah, so yeah. It was one of those things like nobody knew anybody. Right. So like there was people like starting beef with people that like we didn't even know. So we, at that point we were like, anybody who's not contributing is gone. So it was like, we cut it down to eight people. It was myself. Do you send out pink slips or what, how do you get rid of people? Yeah, no, we told everybody, we called them. We're like, you're not part of this anymore. <laughs> like, you know, like you're not doing anything. You're not part of this. You can't Be rep us. Before emails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had to make the call. So it's like myself, Cryptic, Wind and Breeze, uh, Jest, Vast, Vortal, uh, and DJ Sip. And then there's a couple other people that rotated in and out throughout the years. But um, overall, that was a sort of foundation. And then from there, like we started recording a lot and working on music and doing shows. Uh, we put out a thing called the prequel pre prequel album. Um, we put out a vinyl called The Persecution of Hip Hop that had a couple of like other underground groups around. Like I think um, we had like uh, some of like the Anticon guys on there. Wow, yeah. Some random dudes around. Um, and then through all of that, we started connecting with people like Aesop with LP, like Juggernauts, like all those guys, like there became a scene and like people would just like trade tapes with each other and stuff like, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm working on. But it became like this other scene that formed, like almost like the underground to the, to the underground. It was, there was, and I mean, obviously like I was looking at it from the outside, but there, there was like the non-fictions. Yeah. And then there was like everything else, like, you know, Aesop Rock and like, the, you yeah. know, like that universe and stuff like that um and then of course like company flow was probably you know they, i don't know what so like when you guys hear fun car fun crusher plus like that that probably had to be you know it's like oh this is was it like it a was big like, deal to you was it, it was a big like, deal right okay yeah right because yeah. i wasn't sure if it was just a big deal for me as a fan you know oh, no. it was like i mean like we hunted that stuff down like that was just that's like where it's stretching bobito come into it because they were the first dudes playing those guys 
right? And it was like, you know, everybody like would one, like one person would get one song on a tape, be like, did you hear this company flow song? And like, we kind of cobbled together like four or five songs and then they dropped the vinyl. And it was like, we went on missions to find it all over the city. It was like, yeah. and you know, it, it just sort of changed. And one of those things that changed what you were capable of doing. Yeah. Like you, you could put out your own record. You can write songs the way you want to write them, like make beats the way you want to make them. And like, kind of just open things up a little bit. And like, they might have been like the the sort of flag in the ground of like the underground to the underground, I guess. Yeah, no, you're you're right. Cause I remember going to SOBs and like yeah. you know, wow. I would see like fucking was it no wetlands. I remember wetlands. So oh like, yeah, wetlands. Like shit. fucking uh immortal technique will be there selling his yeah. shit, you know, for like 10 bucks. And like he was like preaching that, oh, you yeah. know, it's like, hey man, 80,000 albums, 10 bucks a piece. It's like you do the math, fucking yeah. per CP uh lp would just be sitting on his like you know i think it was like a bicycle maybe it was like a banana seat or something like if i smoking cigarettes yeah yeah everyone was just hanging like no like just outside or whatever and uh you know like inside would be like everyone from like necro to like lewis logic it was just like a fun fucking time man it was and, and in a lot of ways it was like you could have all different styles and all different styles of people like hanging out together which was kind of cool because like places like New York and started like getting more towards like the raucous sound, like raucous to me. And mm. I, I, it's not a slight to raucous, but it was a very specific sound that none of us were fitting into. Right. Like even company, they put out company flow, but only because company flow was already big. Like they would have never signed company flow had company flow not already sold like nearly a hundred thousand records on their own. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, and, no, and it's fun. So you have, I, I wrote this down too. You have a podcast, you know, to like yes. fast forward for a little call out culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been meaning to dip into a lot of these things. And that was one of the episodes that I really wanted to get into. So which one is Rock, that? Raucous versus uh, Def Jux. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it might be a, a, a tournament style episode. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Four songs and put them against each other and have like a couple of our friends come on and we vote to try to figure out which is the most the best song out of all those we do a lot of those we just did a yacht rock one we do yeah. like greatest pop songs we do christmas one like yeah all sorts of like one we, where it's like all songs by groups like train you know whatever. yeah I, what did i just i checked out the disappointing albums one okay yeah check that out that, that was a lot of fun I was, was I, I was just gonna say like we have a lot of crossover with, with the minutiae that we fucking cover on this show <laughs> but it's funny you mentioned Train because I remember uh, Langan. We were going to do that episode. We were going to do an episode. Uh, top ten Train song. No <laughs> song. I can name one. <laughs> no, well, that's what it was. It was songs that we like from bands we don't give a shit about. And yep. one one yes. of my one of my picks is Drops of Jupiter. I like that song. I like, song. <laughs> that song's <laughs> fucking great. It's just really yeah. it's not my yeah. <laughs> I mean that's the criteria, you know. We we you know Steve brought up um, uh, blues traveler. That was the yep. Th that was the catalyst, mm. you know, hook. Uh, but anyway, so but all of that music's in that tournament. It's a soft white boy rock music. So that's yeah. How long you guys been doing the podcast? Um, gosh, I think we started in 2019, so about five years. Yeah, yeah. I think we're almost at 300 episodes. Nice. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How about right. you guys? Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. We get the two yet? I think we did. <laughs> no, we did. 2016, I think we just started about that. Was okay. it? Oh my yeah. god! I think so. Yeah. Yo, it doesn't feel not, that long. We don't work that hard. No, we, pop we don't. Them out here and there. Yeah, yeah. We so that's the whole thing. If I if if we were on a schedule, I would be like real. I like the band is kind of like where my like you know i only have so much time for passion projects mm -hmm. yeah so that's right. i'm just like oh man i gotta fucking like do the band stuff and just talking to uh to tim i was just like yo like we, we were just like talking on, on twitter x or whatever and the stuff we were covering i'm just like man i'm like we, we just gotta like i really just wanted to yeah. like i said i wanted to get further into this conversation uh just for like my rap nerd shit that i love um so just like the formation of like hangar 18 because i know you yeah. have a new album out and i really want to talk about that because like me and lang and fucking love it right oh, it's, all... it's fucking... fucking i was texting him on the way home i'm like giving it a really good listen in the car and stuff and i'm just like man i, I think this might be one of my like 
favorite records this year dude. of the year yeah <laughs> awesome yeah thing. Um, seriously like uh real relatable fucking well we'll get into it but yeah we'll get here. into it because like um uh but like i said hangar 18 um i would always go to the deaf jokes like presents and stuff like that sure. you know i don't remember the first one that i went to but like around that time in the city they they had them all the time so it was like everyone from like you know uh fucking lp aesop rock fucking mr lift you know c rays like I, just all these fucking people constantly doing shows together and i was i was there man so the formation of cannibal ox you know uh and then it probably coincides with hangar at and then right kind of because so at that time when breeze was at he was still in college um so he was out of the city and vortal and i were in a group called saga tetsuo we did a couple like wetland shows together uh we, we like we we're saga tetsuo i think we we're proletariat imperative we were formless metamorphics portal always wanted to change the name like he just always was like we have, I have a better name <laughs> um so we were doing that and then um lp reached out to him and vast about doing canox or about doing music together and at the same time wind and breeze came back from college so um you know they started doing canox um Wind and I met, I met this dude, Paul, uh, he went by DJ Paul and like, he gave me a, a tape of beats and like, you know, three months later I had this stack of tapes. I threw it in and like all of his beats were like, oh my God, these are great. So I started going and recording when came, when came over once and did a song. And like the second he came, the three of us worked together. We're like, oh, this works. It just works. Like, cause when and I had done stuff like jazz with cryptic with like a lot of different people. And it was always so dark, like. You know, they make very dark music mm. and him and I were dark dudes. Like, it, yeah, you know, we tried to fit in that world, but it just never felt right. And then with Paul, like Paul was sort of like more traditionalist with his sound. You know, he's very heavy in his drums and it, it came across. Like I said, when, yeah. I, I don't remember the first time I saw you guys, but I probably saw you before I ever listened to you. Mm -hmm. And th um, there always was that I think I was like. It's interesting, you know, when I look back at the Def Jux stuff now, like I was all about it. And like I had friends that are like, I remember one guy who was like my friend Justin. He's like, yeah, I'm LP. I'm L like, and he's rapping. And he's like, and he falls asleep. And I'm like, I couldn't understand it then. But like I, now I get it. I'm like, OK, it's not for everyone. Yeah. Just like pavement isn't for everyone. OK, sure. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and then just like watching you guys, I you just basically just felt more traditional and then like you guys did like the great exchange right like you guys had like the the real mc yeah. routine like the back and forth shit um did you was there like a dj fucking routine that you guys did like i'm trying to remember i did have dj routines at times because we had like dj big wiz who went on to become like aesop's dj so we had djs at points that would like we would tour with and do routines with um, so there's definitely more times when we did. Yeah, long story short, you guys, like, it's hard, you know, when you see, like, live hip-hop and you don't know it, you know, people just, like, rapping and you're like, okay, yeah. this this is fine. You guys, I just remember Hangar 18, but, like, you guys were always, like, the highlight of the show. So that's why that's it's fun sad. for me to talk to you. Well, we, we our approach was, like, because we always went on early. So yeah. our goal was, like, we're going to set the fucking party off. Like, we wanted... To we wanted to have fun. Like our, our approach even to like songwriting at the time was like, you know, if like the commercial music can make like the shittiest lyrics ever with a great hook and a great beat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we could do the same thing with a great hook and great beat, but have good lyrics. Yeah. Like we, why can't we do that? Why can't we make fun music? And like, but just make it in our sort of ethos where it's like, it's going to be super lyrical it's going to be technical. It's going to be fun. It's going to have content that matters. Sometimes content that didn't matter. Like looking back on it, like <laughs> that content didn't matter at all. It mattered to me when I was like maybe drunk in 23. But, um, you know, like there's sort of our, our goal was to basically like come on first and make it difficult for everybody else to come after us. I think you did, man. Um, that was the goal. For sure. I think it, it definitely. Yeah. I'll always remember, too, you know, the one group that didn't go over was SA Smash. I feel so like Smash and Grover, yeah. they they had a, they were like the only group because I feel like they might have been way too traditional for that audience and I'll ne I'll never forget uh Camus, 
you know, RIP saying like, hey, man, I like Jay-Z too, but goddamn, I guess the crowd just wasn't feeling them at like a New York show. Yeah. And that stuck with me. You know, he's like, man, I like the blueprint too, but come on, fucking guy. You know, like, I think it was yeah. like, maybe they, it was like a coming home show after like they did. Yeah, because LP, I'll, I'll, so it might have been at Bowery. He's like, yo, New York, it's so good to be home. He's like, because let me tell you, uh, New York is not the rest of the world. Yeah, it certainly you know? isn't. So they probably had a, you know, like a pretty interesting tour around the world. Um, yeah. So great album title suit for Hangar 18, right? So uh, multi-platinum, what was the first one? Multi-platinum. Multi-platinum debut album. Debut album, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it had the fucking, it had the fucking guitar amp on the front. And, yeah. Then, yeah. and then the second one was Sweep the Leg. It's which delay, is yeah. right now is like i mean not right now but like a few you know a few years after like the whole cobra kai fucking sure. craze you guys were ahead of the track yeah yeah i mean we went with um multi-platinum debut album because we figured anytime they write a review about us they would have to say hangar 18 the multi-platinum debut album so like it would be in print that we have a multi-platinum debut album yeah and we thought it might trick some people into like buying the record um okay. So I don't know if it did, probably not, but um, yeah. yeah. And then just sweep the leg. I don't, I don't know. We just thought it was funny. Like yeah. everything we did was because we thought it was funny. Which is the best. Yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's it made definitely. us laugh and like, we didn't care. Like, you know, we, we played like some of those same cities that SA smash came back and complained about. And once we realized we weren't going to win them over, we were like, let's make them hate us. <laughs> I I want them to, I want you to hate me so much I don't care it will be the best thing like I'll have so much fun yeah like that became the goal like when they didn't buy in they're like all right let's what were what were all some right. of those cities that were like super hard um geez like there was um where it's like University of Illinois where is that it was like Urbana Chicago like Urbana Illinois like out there sure. that was a tough one um San Francisco was always oddly tough um couple canadian cities like montreal sometimes was tough quebec was always fucking tough uh quebec city um where else warp tour was tough for a little oh while. so warp, warp tour. tour yeah you oh, guys yeah. were you guys were there in 2005 yes i think q unique was q unique on that year or maybe he it was the year come, before he did a couple of shows yeah okay yeah because uh yeah. He, so like i ended up becoming friends with him like he did the show. I don't know. We just like he's he's a cool dude, man. Shout out to Q. And I yeah. found out years later that he used a lot of my friends as his backing band. Oh, really? Warped Tour. I had no idea. And like just he's yeah. like, yeah, he's like, I had this band from Long Island and he named people. I was like, I know fucking all of them. So that's amazing. Um, yeah, so that was a weird time for the warp tour as well. Cause I think that they were trying to branch out, right? Like with uh God damn. Like I think they went straight indie and maybe the yeah. indie stuff didn't really work. And then they went to like something completely like, I feel like Kid Rock might have been, I don't even know. Yeah. I don't think he was on ours. Like I think like Dropkick Murphys and My Chemical Romance were like the headliners. That makes sense. Yeah. We were on it. But um, it was just a weird, like, cause it wasn't hip hop kids. Yeah. But we had to figure out, it took us like 10 shows to figure it out. But once we did, like we packed our 10 every time after that. Yeah. But it was just like we had to figure out that crowd. It wasn't our crowd. And looking back, like, would you like if you could change even being there or was it still a cool experience? Oh, it was awesome. I wouldn't change a thing about it. Yeah, It was one of my favorite tours, to be honest oh. with you. Like, it was. What what kind of things did you have to do to win over the crowd like that? That you weren't like what? I mean, sometimes it was just like taking the microphones and going like 50 feet outside of the tent and like corralling. Okay. Them, like almost like, right, cheap, right. you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was really just like going to the people because they weren't going to come to us. Yeah, so, yeah. Like we did that with selling CDs, everything. Like we used to just like pull like ten kids together and be like, "We're going to do a, a show just for you," and like do a song together and be like, "You each have a dollar, buy a CD and burn it for each other." Fuck you know, yeah. like and we weren't getting paid for it or anything, so we had to like sell our asses off. And that you guys, I I mean, listen, that was around the time the CDs were like becoming like not even a thing. Yeah. Which yeah. I th which I think for the most part is kind of what sank Def Jux at the end, right? Like it yeah. just it was just a weird time. Now, obviously, I feel like people have figured out a way to like monetize streaming and all that other stuff. 
So like, what was that like when you realized that things just, I don't know, the internet was just such a big deal or becoming a big deal that like the writing might've been on the wall that this physical media was over. Yeah, it, it was definitely weird. Um, it was also like a lot of things were happening at the same time. So it was like, you know, for a while, like jokes in the underground were kind of like the darlings of like the indie press Yes, or even like some of the bigger press. And they, all of those writers like kind of got sick of us and switched over to like Dipset and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, right? <laughs> yeah. you know, like so many like people in media are just like fucking chasing the next thing. They're like junkies. Oh, wow. Right. So it's like you kind of learn to like not take any of them seriously at that time. Um, but like, so that happened, like the, the sort of world, like stopped paying attention to us outside of like a few little people. The music industry died. The label went under we actually broke up. So it was like kind of just everything happened at the same time. So it didn't really get to see the impact of not selling music. Like I thought the reason we didn't sell anything on Sweep the Leg was because it was kind of a mediocre record. <laughs> Honestly, like when I look back on it for a long time. You like debut better? I like debut much better. Yeah. I mean, Sweep the Leg has grown on me, but I remember like recording the whole thing and like thinking it was good as we were going through it. And we finally had it mixed and mastered and like sitting in the studio and smoking a joint and listening to it and getting like halfway through the album and being like, shit, this really drags in the middle, you know, like mm -hmm. it was, but at that point it was done. It was like, the label's like, it's coming out. You have to give it to us. So it's yeah. like, all right. Yeah. Um, it's, we, it's a compromised record in some ways because we had a version of it done like two years prior that was a lot stronger and a lot like more closer to, um the multi-platinum definitely like you know it grew from the multi-platinum but we sat on it for like two years and like doing a lot of touring like doing warp tour touring with gym class heroes oh yeah you know, that, doing, that was a big like, tour. all over the place like we kind of were like oh we could try to do something for that audience and then do something for this audience uh and started like focusing on who we were making the music for rather than why we were making the music and i, I think that impacted the quality of the record at least from my point of view. Yeah, so there, there was a time in your head that you felt like, you know, you guys were out of here, right? Like maybe like yeah. a gym class tour and you're like, you know what? This could be like a full-time thing or I like yeah. this, this, right? So yeah, I mean, we were we were all full-time at that point because we were doing like 200 shows a year at that point. Crazy. Um, and, you know, like it, it just was like, you kind of saw that there was a path somehow to like become a full-time artist, but, or not a full-time, but like a successful artist, like not have to have like a temp job when you come home. Yeah. Um, I, but, I, I always say this. I, I always say if I made the money that I made at my job playing music, yeah. that's what I would do. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm actually at this point in my life, I probably wouldn't do that. Like I have no desire to like be a full-time musician. <laughs> I know. According, I, I'm going to bring up the songs you're talking about. Yeah. You'd rather be on the couch than on the stage. Yeah, you're, for real. You're right with it. <laughs> yeah. uh, yo, I, what a great time to be a part of. Um, thank you for like walking me through a lot of that stuff. I'm sure there's yeah. like a hundred other things that I, I wanted to ask you about from that era. But like, you know, I just, let's talk about the new record. Okay. Um, you, I know you've done a lot Ooh. of stuff from then till now. Like yeah. the uh, reverberations of a dead man's ego just came out. So I, I really yes. wanted to like, I just sat with it. I sent it to Langan. Cause I, I figured we, we would, I, I already fuck with hangar 18 and all the stuff that you do, mm -hmm. but it's crazy and awesome to see that. Like, you know, like your wordplay and your songwriting is still like top notch, you know, in 2024. Cause sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes people just don't even make music. Some people, yeah. You know, it's just like completely different. Um, so steel tope, uh, st steel tip dove. Tell me, like, what's the deal with him? I I, I don't really know him. So he um he has a studio out here in Brooklyn, and he does he does production. Um, are you familiar with like Billy Woods and Backwoods and that whole scene? Yeah. So he does a lot of work with those guys. Okay. He does production for those guys. He's been working with those guys for years. Um, and we've sort of just kind of circled each other for a while. Like we've known each other for some time and we kept saying like, yeah, let's do something. Let's do something. Uh, and about two summers ago, um, it just sort of lined up where we were able to work. I had a lot of time um, and, you know, my kid was at sleepaway camp um, and he had time. He was in between projects. So we were like, let's just do something. And like within like two months, we knocked out a full record 
called um, Structural Dynamics of Flow. And it just was like, it's it's a weird thing to like work with somebody and it's just easy. Like it always felt like, you know, music kind of feels like a struggle sometimes. And everything that I do with Dove is just easy. I don't know if it's like what it is about working with him. I think a big part of it is like the last 10 years, I've just been like working on my own. You know, even if I do projects with somebody else, it's like somebody from Illinois or somebody from Philly, you know, they send me beats, I'll write, I'll record, I'll send it to them. They'll send it back to me. There's no like collaboration, like real like in-person collaboration. Sure. And Doug and I work together in the studio. Oh, that's killer. Yeah. It's really just like, it It just changes the dynamic of the way things happen. And, you know, I think we both have, we both have day jobs. We both have lots of life responsibilities. So, you know, when we get there, we, we work. It's like, it's not like kind of, it's not fucking around. It's not anything. It's like, let's work. Let's make dope shit. Let's not waste each other's time. Let's work. And, yeah. Uh, it kind of just, it, it's a real natural connection. I don't really know how to explain. I've never had a musical connection like this before. It, so the it, production it, is yeah. real, real unique. unique. Like, uh, yeah. I can't put my finger on like it, it, it touches on a lot of traditional hip hop and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and horns and stuff, but it isn't, it's got its own twist to it. And there's a lot of yeah. like, sinister sound and shit it, it, it kind of goes all over the place it's it, it really impressive yeah he's really good with horns i've noticed yeah he does a great job with horns and his drums are great too like that's mm. i've always thought about producers that are really good with drums because to me that's like if you don't have good drums it's kind of yeah. what we're talking about the hardcore band like if you don't have good drums like what's yeah. the point yeah um, and he's really good with drums and i don't know like i he makes weirdo shit and i like weirdo shit you have to like i hate like getting traditional stuff no, but but I mean it's it's not like so left field where like yeah. you just listen to it. There's a couple of things like towards like the end that, that definitely like get experimental. But yeah. uh so it's like 15 songs. Uh it's there's a lot of like tying themes in here that I love because I feel like we're all kind of like close to the same age. So like I get so like track one, key to life, right? Uh yeah. fucking humidity and despair. Who the fuck does not <laughs> Who the fuck does not hate humidity? That's what I, <laughs> right? So I, it's like New York City in the summer, right? Like getting uh, yeah. on the subway train, you're just like, fuck. It's oh. like humidity, piss, just like yeah. completely, 100%. Uh, but also in that song, what, I, what what reminds me of why I fuck with you, and uh, you mentioned Violent Femmes and Souls of Mischief in this song. Sure. Right? So yeah. like, just the, the combination of, of you dropping those two things it would be considered the very extreme opposite spectrums but for m some people they make complete sense together so yeah i i think it's one of those things like how you you guys were talking about like those bands that you could give a fuck about but you love the song yeah like 20 years ago we probably all would have just kept that to ourselves yeah right so i think it's just that sort of thing like this is all part of me like i don't care if you like me or not this is all part of me take it or leave it i'm mm -hmm. still gonna do what i do like uh, you get to the point where you don't give a fuck anymore. It's a uh, great place to be. Yeah. So I'm just going to, I I got some like, you know, tidbits from like each thing here. So me and Lang and we'll just jump in. Uh, okay. sure. Ballad Ballad of the Has-Been, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, in it, you mentioned sound bombing. Yes. Sound bombing one, sound bombing two. two. Do you remember sound bombing three? Like that was like where they like kind of like change. Yeah. Nah, right? <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, we're, but we do talk about that in the sound bombing versus Def Jux episode. I will fucking Nobody definitely be. I will three. be listening to that. So, yeah. uh, were you? Would you say sound bombing one or sound, sound bombing two was better? Which one was your favorite? Sound bombing two was better. Loved it. Like as as a cohesive record, sound bombing two was better. Yeah. To this day, sound bombing one had bangers. Like it had like Mike Zoot songs and um. Yeah. The Mike Zoot shit was crazy, and then um, um most deaf right and then Bush oh, babies most deaf stuff. was that. Bush was babies, you said? Yeah, the Bush babies were on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool Keith. Um, and then yo, I always like fucking say, I always say the line, something, something, something. I get weeded. My daughter scribbled over that line. I couldn't read it, which is like that <laughs> Eminem shit. <laughs> Eminem, the the uh, what was it like bad pills or something like that? I forgot what that it is. One. It's it's that was like one of Eminem's best fucking songs. Yeah, it was so so in the pocket there. It was so good um so what do i have here what's up uh... i okay, loved yeah. uh go ahead oh go ahead no no i was no, gonna, I was say, gonna like, say like yeah i was gonna say like continuing with that i just had one more question on that so because uh some of the themes that you talked about um were just you said you look like your father you know just a, a lot of like old versus uh young now what is something 
that you hated as a kid, but you could appreciate now? Commercial rap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I hated it, but I, I appreciate it now. Like I listened to like, I listened to <laughs> Harlem the other day for the first time. I've never oh, listened wow. to the record and I hated it. I yeah. never listened to it, but I hated it. I was like, it's really fucking good. I don't know if you ever listened to that record. I don't think Wait so. a minute. No, I, think I, mean, I like, did a long time that? ago. I yeah. think I did a long time ago. I don't remember. If you guys like, hold like up. the Griselda shit, yeah. Mm. It's it's right there. Like I'm I could I was kind of shut. You know, there's definitely the commercial songs, but like Mace is flowing on that that shit. I don't mind yeah, I don't mind like a lot of it now. Like I said, yeah. my girlfriend threw me a 40th birthday party and uh at my friend's bar, and they were playing some like, you know, some loud ass shit. And then like um, what is that? Um Cardi B some Cardi B song came yeah. on, and I'm I'm like, I get it. Yeah. Like I, do I want to hear Triumph right now? Probably not. I like yeah. you know you know what I mean. Like I mean, sure, I love bombing atomically and you know Socrates' oh, philosophies, yeah. but you know like Cardi B is kind of like like I get it now. So yeah, yeah. I, I feel you, Langan. Yeah. You want to say something? Oh, I one of the highlights for me that track "Bad Seeds," man, the nostalgia oh, yeah. trip on that man year. that that was so beautiful. Uh, Samantha Fox posted a shout out. Yeah, um, and there was a line in particular about that struck me uh, about way more deviant, but somehow more pure. Yeah. Am I getting that right? Yeah. That shit, I had to pause on that. I was like, wow, that is, that makes so much sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I work with, I work with a lot, like I work at a university. So I see like a lot of these kids that they're, they're also like, they think they're very like pure and idealistic. Yeah. Like, You're yeah. not, you're actually little evil fucks, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's I, like, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's I, not even your fault. You were raised to be evil fucks. Like, whereas we were left alone yeah. to like figure shit out. And yeah, we did some evil shit, but we also were like, like it was, it was driven by us and not driven by like parents trying to make you into like little automatons. Yeah, for society. We, we were fucking left. I mean, I was left alone. They were just, oh, yeah. my mom was 21. My dad was 23. So it was like, they were like, they, you know, like they want to yeah. fuck, like we'll have you, but we ain't taking care of you. Yeah, no, you're on your own. Once you're, you're out, you're on your own, kid. Yeah, it's like go hang out with your grandmother, but uh, yeah. you take going, your brother with you. Going to Bad Seed, I'll I'll jump to that real quick. So, uh, what yeah. what are some of the posters that you you too Langan? Like, what are some of the posters you had on your wall that you remember? I mean, like the I had the hole and ass poster. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I do. Yeah, I remember. I didn't have it, but I remember. I know the one he's talking about. Though. It's it's basically like a pickup truck with like four girls like standing on it. Okay. With like thongs, <laughs> so you just saw them like leaning over the top of the pickup truck, like yeah, they yeah. were standing in the cab or not the cab, the bed. Um, I had definitely had the Paulina Poroskovich one. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had uh, I had that Michael Jordan one where he was like holding the the two basketballs, like the wingspan joint. Um. I had a lot of like, like you, you guys used to go to county fairs and stuff like that, or like Fireman Bazaar or Italian yeah. Feast things. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. I had and one down the block from my like, house. You could win like the Motley Crue mirror. Yeah, or like the mirror. Satin flag. I had a lot of those growing up. Like, yo, Motley Crue. That mirror was hot shit back. Right? Yeah, it with the pentagram. Shit. Shout out the devil. It could, yeah. it could scrape it right. Like you put your wipe your finger on it, run that paint was oh, coming right, right off. Yeah. <laughs> I had a ton of Iron Maiden posters. I was super into Iron Maiden. Me Maid. too. Yeah. So I was yeah, gonna say too. I had Power Slave. Oh yeah, I had Power Slave, um, which isn't even my favorite album of theirs. No. Uh, so like you fuck That's with Maiden? On no, no, that? you fuck with Maiden though. I I I had probably like Seventh Son of a Seventh Son was the last record I heard. Okay, that's my favorite album. Yeah, That's the last good one. I I I've been listening to Maiden since sixth grade. Yeah. So Ooh. my my dad had um he worked on like beer trucks and uh he had this kid that was helping him this dude named Paulie. He lived in the Bronx. He was like a graffiti artist in the Bronx. And um he just used to give me metal tapes all the time when I was like in 4th and 5th grade and he gave me one that was um Def Leppard Pyromania mm -hmm. and Number of Yeah. And that was like from there I was like all right, I'm all in. Like I don't care about anything else. I don't I'm not listening to the Jay Giles band anymore. I'm listening to this. I went back. I circled back to the jails. Yeah. Jay Giles. Same thing. You know, like, <laughs> and even some of that solo Peter Wolf stuff too. Oh wow, I've never heard any of that. 
Oh man, I gotta send you the video. He he did a video okay. on MTV. Yo, so he has a video on MTV that's so much fun where he jumps like a rabbit through the whole thing. It's fucking weird, oh, really? but the okay. song the song's a banger. Nice. Uh so going back to Bad Seeds, because I, I think you might have mentioned uh a video store, maybe. Um I just want to ask you what what was one, some of the wildest shit you rented at a mom and pops uh, video store? I mean, every single horror movie I rented, like um, Basket Case. Uh, do you remember The Beast Within? Yeah, of course. Yeah, The Beast Within. Um, that one, I don't know why, like there's that scene where you like turn somebody inside out. Like that stays in my head. I don't even know if it's real, but for some reason it's in my head. Um, that cover you know, too. Like that. The it's obviously like nightmare, you know, the, the sort of standards. So Pieces. Friday. So like, yeah. let me ask you this. What do you think the best Friday the 13th film is? I'm either two or four. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Solid. Yeah. What about uh, you guys? Four or two for me. Yeah, yeah. four is really? my number one. I'm four yeah. or six. <laughs> I love six too. Six I do is love great. Six is fun. Yeah. yeah cause like, you, let me ask you this though. How do you feel about Jason Goes to Hell? Because Sam loves it. <laughs> I adore it. I think it's great. I, I don't you think like it We found movie another one. one. I don't. I, the only one I don't like is five. But outside, I don't think there's a bad movie in a bunch. Okay, yeah. so I grew to appreciate five after getting a bunch of shitty ones. So okay. Now when I watch five, I, I I like during the summer I always do like a rewatch. So I did two, I did two, three, four, and five and six. Okay. I, I skipped one because like I as time goes on, like I, I just realized that I I. Aside well, from you guys the, were talking about that on the podcast with, with the dude that did the fan yeah. film. Aside, hey, somebody aside, said to watch The Burning. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen The Burning. I need to see that. Oh, it's that's yeah. Good. He did. He replaces one with The Burning. That's a good one, yeah. right? Uh yeah. I I just like I I really appreciate Five just for the absurdity. Now it's just like okay. pure absolute fucking nonsense. Um, but yeah, it's a I, I growing up like I, we would rent like. My dad told we lived in Queens. And okay. He, he told this other, you know, Colombian to Colombian. He t he's like, yeah, he's like, let this kid rent whatever he wants. And nice. I, I would go there and I would rent pieces. Pieces was one of those movies that oh, was yeah. like that one was I had it on VHS, and that one was a little bit like Pieces and Maniac were two movies that were like beyond yeah. anything that I could comprehend at that time. Yeah. They felt yeah. like extra. <laughs> like, yeah. Maniac, Jay I definitely couldn't fuck with Maniac. I loved Pieces, though. I loved it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you didn't like Maniac? I did. I couldn't fuck with it. It was too much for me. It's a lot. Yeah. Did you? Oh, so you never even seen the Elijah Wood remake? Oh, no, I've seen it since then. I'm talking about when I was little. Oh, no, but the mm. Elijah Wood remake. It's did great. You yeah. That? It's so good. It's, it's really good. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of the best big box covers, too. It was always, yeah. always jumped off the shelves. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's holding like listen, a scalp. Is it a scalp he's holding, or is he holding yeah. a head? Nah, yeah. probably a scalp, but it looks like a head. But yeah. uh, yeah, William Lustig, so he rules, right? So Maniac, sure. Maniac Cop. I love the Maniac Cop trilogy. Maniac, right? yeah. I, I I have vague memories of that. I know I've seen at least the first one. Like I just remember the guy's jaw. Yeah, well, of course. Mm. Yeah, but Rob, I, that's I, one I, of those franchises. The second one might be the. Is it the is best in the okay. batch. Yeah. It's 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 the second one is definitely the best. But Robert Zadar, he had like uh, that condition called cherubism. Yeah. Did you ever watch his ridiculous movie called Samurai Cop? No, I've never seen oh, that. Oh man, do yourself a favor. Nah, yo, two. All right, I got to remember. I'm sending you two links that you're really. Okay. Gonna, Oh, no. the, the movie is just outrageous. But uh, yeah. so I, I want to get back to the record. Um, statues crumble. Yes. I, I, I listen. Uh, we all know. You know. I, I, I I'm, I'm like a, an apology. I, I think Mark, Mark McGrath is kind of awesome. I think he's a pop culture junkie, like, like all of yeah. us. He, he did great on Celebrity Jeopardy. Uh, and I, in '97, I was on the run from the cops for a year. Okay. Uh, I was in Queens and the only thing I had, I was like staying, I was hiding out at my grandmother's <laughs> and the only thing I had was MTV and I couldn't leave. Right. So I was like stuck yeah. in this place. 
And 97 was a weird year for fucking music, but Fly was one of those songs that I just, I heard and I fucking loved. I don't know why. Like, I was just like... I thought you were going to say you only had a Sugar Ray tape. Not, <laughs> like, God damn. I, I only had a Sugar Ray You were really tape. hitting the match. Your grandmother the... recorded that video and it got stuck in the VCR and just played on a loop. Her whole yeah. 1997. Uh, yeah, 97, you know... It, did its thing anyway that that song in particular you know just another great song like I'm, I'm just going through all these basically 15 songs and they're all bangers uh vulture right what about the gobekli tape am i pronouncing that right oh, uh, yeah a euronymous drop in that you fuck yeah. with the black metal there oh uh, no it's euronymous bosh <laughs> I do fuck with the oh, but it wasn't Ronimus Bosch. Oh, I didn't even catch yeah. that. All right. I heard Ronimus. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't like, that's kind of like how it was the top three church burnings. But um, <laughs> yeah, now I, I read Lords of Chaos like years ago. I was like, what the fuck is this? And just had to yeah. like sort of I'm, go down. You know, I don't listen to it regularly, but the, I do. The lore it. is better than the music. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Which I thought I, was, yeah. I thought that was a good movie. I, thought, I enjoyed the movie, but apparently people hate it. Like, um, I have a, a a dude I know that does like podcasts. He like he was part of a a podcast called Dead End Hip Hop. Uh, this dude Mike C Town, um, but he's like super into like black metal and hardcore. He was in a band like, oh, what the fuck were they called? They were like something Orion, but it was like sort of like crazy like black metal or death metal band that was really cool. Um, but he he like hated the movie. Like he was really into. It. He's like I it doesn't. I think that's what it is when you're too close to it. We're casual. Yeah. So like, yeah. I'm not, I, I don't have that attachment to it. And Jonas, Ackerling, it, it, you know, what with biopics, you kind of just got to let it go. Like if yeah. it's documentaries are out there on everything you want to see and you got to yeah. know with a biopic, they're going to take liberties. And it's, yeah. just, and it's, I, it's a different animal. I didn't yeah. remember. It was the same director as Spun, which was fucking mm. wild. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well, he was in, he was in Bathory. I think he was the drummer for Bathory. Yeah. Where he was he was in the band when he started, so he's got a connection to you know got cred. And I think he's doing the Gigi Allen doc uh biopic. Really? Makes sense. Yeah. I just watched who's playing Gigi Allen. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Who is playing Gigi Allen? Wow. I just you... watched a documentary on his brother. Oh Channing all, Tatum. All, all no Channing Tatum. <laughs> all uh all in the family or Allen in the family? Yeah, yeah. That was pretty uh, good. It was pretty good. Uh, it, it's so interesting because he seems like such a nice guy, minus yeah. like the Hitler mustache and like whatever, yeah. whatever thing, and like the shit art that he does. Yeah. yeah. Besides that. Besides yeah. that. But mom, was, mom is cool. You know. The yeah. most troubling thing was his drummer's apartment. Oh, Dino. I was just like, what the fuck? Like. Yeah. It, it was just like I, I get creeped out by hoarders. Like that's the scariest thing in the world to me. And it was like some hoarders uh, shit just filled with like drumsticks that were shoved up his ass. And up his like, ass, yo. So I, had a, <laughs> I they used to play Long Island, and my friend would tell me he's like, yeah, he's like that dude would shove like drumsticks up his ass and get, and it's like, yeah, you could you can keep that one. So, yeah, um, no, uh, anyway, uh, a couple more things here. Listen, I, we would be insane to not cover Murder by Numbers. Yes, um, it's. I mean, you you know, you explain what it is. You could probably explain it better than I can. It's, it's like our our love for horror movies. Yeah, like um, the beat seems crazy. Like it was perfect, a perfect beat for that song. Um, and like Sharif and Prem, I talk with those guys about horror movies all the time. So it's like, let's do a song. Are those the guys and, you do the pod? Uh, the hor- you say you do a horror pod as well, right? Yeah. So the the horror pod is uh, Mike C Town. He's like a big horror guy. Um, and it's, uh, this dude, uh, there's a podcast called crate 808. It's a UK podcast. So the dude cam that runs that podcast, he's a huge horror fan. And he has a friend named Thomas Hobbs, who's a journalist out in the UK as well. And it's just the four of us. And we like this year, we're focusing on 40th or anniversaries of big movies. So like in the next few weeks, we're doing Terminator, Mm. uh, Nightmare on Elm street, Texas chainsaw massacre, um black christmas and i think it's man wow. bites Dog. maybe it's like a uk film yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's french i think right there about the serial killer it's a, i think so yeah 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 like a pseudo documentary on a serial killer yeah so it's we're gonna shit. focus on those um and then we always do like sort of like mid-year or year-end wrap-ups 
or if there's like a big a big movie that comes out, we'll do that. Like we did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one. We did like the Halloween ones, which were just, you know, terrible movies. Like the recent Halloween. <laughs> what the recent ones? Yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a Halloween ends apologist. <laughs> well, you know, I liked everything until they brought Laurie and Michael into the movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought the rest of it was great. I wish that that was the first movie in the in the series. I like think... the town dealing with that and this kid, and then like sort of build from there. But yeah. the second one was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Okay. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause like the first I one. I was so first... wrong on the, my first takes. I'm like, I kind of like 2018 and I didn't mind kills. And then as time went on, I'm like, I don't think I was completely wrong about all of this. Yeah. I was the same way. <laughs> I liked the first one a lot. I like yeah. what the whole dynamic is really cool. And then I watched it. And I was like, this is fucking stupid. Yeah. Like yeah. just the whole, like getting Michael, there was stupid Halloween kills. I, my, my daughter is like a huge horror fan. So we went to see that. We saw all of them in the theater and I was like, Halloween, that was cool. And she was like, that movie sucked. <laughs> it was oh, you, like, you liked it at first? At first I liked Halloween Kills. And then like, I watched it again. I was like, let me rewatch this. And I was like, no, this is terrible. This is the worst thing I've yeah, ever yeah. seen. I, so I, you know, we, we had the excitement of like 2018 and we're like, all right, this is going to be cool, whatever. And I, I loved it. I was like, oh, this feels like a Halloween movie and all this other shit. Um, and then Halloween Kills came out and, the, you know, they did the same thing. So they played it in theaters. We went and then the next day they played it on Peacock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So within the first five minutes, like when they did that flashback and like they're like the, the fake Loomis, I was like, yo, what the fuck is this? Like, I, yeah. it just like killed me. And yeah. then like it, as it kept going on, I was like, I felt the way I felt while I was watching Phantom Menace. Like mm. my excitement was just go like this. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to get any better. And like when he like fucking like, I, like just the, the door gun shot face, like him doing like the raid action moves to like the firemen. Yeah. Uh, I, it, I think the David Gordon <laughs> Green is done with horror movies. I think it's I over. So. The experiments after the exorcist embarrassment. <laughs> oh, like, that was terrible. I think he's just, I think they're going back to making some of the best comedy. Yeah, just go ever. there. I, I had high hopes. I was like, oh, they might do something cool. They yeah. didn't. Yeah. No, but, and, and, you know, to go back to Halloween ends, like, uh, I think it was just so fucking bizarre and mm -hmm. weird with a great soundtrack of like Johnny Goth and like fucking um, what else was on there? Fucking Sebado and all these like random songs. I'm like, this is cool. Uh, Somebody said it was like a Michael Mann Halloween movie. I get, yeah. But I mean, also like I picked up on the Halloween three, like font and I'm like, oh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Uh, and they did a bunch of like cool stuff. And then the Christine like similarities, yeah. you know, where he had the Cunningham last name. So I kind of like overlooked it. The one thing that I will say, I wish that movie ended with Michael's mask being on 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 her table with um, the shamrock fucking thing from Halloween three on it. Oh, that that cool. that, that would have been cool, cool. but it, it didn't happen that way. So the, those uh, movies made me reevaluate my love for Halloween. Oh man, that's sad. Ooh. That's yeah. that is. I mean, sad. I I also marathoned everything with my daughter, like to bring her up to speed, and I was like, "This is a fucking terrible series." Is it? Like, girl, it's my like, favorite. It's oh, it's my favorite. Yo, I love the yeah the first two. I love the original. I even like the second Rob Zombie one a lot. Mm. But just because wow. like I I view it as a, not a Halloween movie, <laughs> it's just like a slasher film. I'm like it's cool. That's a showstopper right there. Yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry. I, go. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it, it's funny you mentioned that because, like, that's how I felt watching, like, the prequels to Star Wars. Like, I after I watched the three prequels, mm -hmm. I was like, I reevaluated. I was like, maybe I'm too old to give a yeah. shit about this stuff. And then The Force Awakens came out and all that. And I'm like, okay, I, th I think I like it again. But yeah, like, yeah. it really, like, shook me. Those three prequels, I was like, I do not care about any of this stuff right now, but I just really needed like the last like 20 minutes of revenge of the Sith. And I was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Always. But, uh, I, I love, so like if, if we did the big four, right. If we yeah. do Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. um, nightmare on Elm street and Halloween, 
what how would you place those franchises then um i would go friday the 13th texas chainsaw terrifier nightmare on elm street terrifier. i'm taking Halloween off altogether yeah yeah fucking terrifier man <laughs> i can't wait <laughs> I, but, so know, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre had like two good movies, right? The rest is just like pretty. Like I hate three. I hate New Generation. Three is terrible. Three is terrible. The ones uh, with Jessica Biel and I thought the prequel cool weren't that was bad. a remake. But that with Ar- Arlie Ermy. But then yeah. the, whole, the other one was was that. I thought those were decent. I, I I same thing. I went through like I watched all of them like last year. I went through it all, and overall, I enjoyed the 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 series. I mean, it's there's no continuity to anything. It's a shit show. One and two are great. Three One sucks. And two are great. Yeah. Second generation or next generation sucks. No continuity. The weird, like, when they get, get bad, they get really bad. <laughs> That's yeah, like, they'll, they'll do good, but when they like tank it, like part four or that, <laughs> yeah. I thought that Leatherface movie or whatever was fucking bad. I like that oh, one. And the, oh, I like that one too. I yeah. like that the 3D, one. 3D, the 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 oh, one with, what's the name? That's the worst. Alexander you know, Daddario, the one where she's like, "Do you think, cause that one?" Yeah. Uh, yes, maybe yeah, the worst think. line in movie history, uh, horror movie history. What did you think of the the Netflix one that came out like a couple of years ago? I didn't mind it. Yeah, fuck that one though. The first time I saw, I fucking hated it. Like yeah. we did an episode on, we all hated it, and then when we came back for the end of the year, it's in my top five. Oh, like, that's funny. Did a full like turnaround on. I was like, oh, I love it. It's fun. I didn't like, mind. Yeah, I didn't mind it. Like, I, I just, yeah, I, I didn't mind it. But the, you know what it is? It's like when you get so much shit leading up to something that, like, the bar, it's just like, oh my god, it wasn't that bad, you know? I mean, so. it also like yeah. the way they killed off, like, uh, what was her name, uh, Marilyn? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. Sally, yeah. Sally Holmes. Yeah. Hard to see the way they killed her off. Like and then what they did with Jamie Lee, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Halloween, it made me appreciate what they did with fucking Sally Hardesty way more. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Resurrection is the worst, uh, hands down. Resurrection is the worst. Fucking, it's like arguably one of the worst movies of all time, but by far, there is no horror sequel that's worse than Halloween Resurrection. It's just yeah, I would agree. It takes the fuck. the rhymes time. couldn't even save it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't save it at all. Aside from my boy Busta, but uh, I got two two quick things, real quick. Um, okay. I want to talk. Yeah, like I really wanted to go back to the podcast for you. Uh, some more episodes that I want to listen to. I'm going to put. Uh, we need to talk about Vordal Mega. Okay. Just uh, that's a good big one. big cannibal. Oh, I checked there. out disappointing uh, verses by good MCs. Okay, that's I like that one too. Very good. Yep. Um, we need to talk about Wu Tang, of course, because I don't know exactly the premise, but I sometimes I feel like we do need to talk about them, you know. Uh, and yeah, then the, I, I think we're talking about later era Wu Tang, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like, we okay. need to talk about it's either it's either somebody who's really good, but they're not like in that legend category, or it's somebody that you're like they were good and something happened along the way. So I feel like that might be the Wu Tang one. Those. You know, those, yeah, there's a lot of things. And that's why I love that Inspected Deck, who's the most underrated, obviously, Lang, and we agree, got a second breath. Got a second breath with Zarface. Like, I love yeah. that he fucking got snatched and they, you know, I, I might have to go see them in Brooklyn with Ill Bill. Uh, nice. And then nice. there's there's other two, the two other episodes, because I love, I think, Black Thought. I First of all, The Roots have never put out a bad album. The fact yeah. that now black thought is is getting dapped up and 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 the respect you know it, it, verse of the year 2013 by far bird's eye on the static selector record only to come out next year with the imperial on the next static like mm. those two verses oh, were I heard those at oh really yeah oh. i i think around that time i had like kind of like i had like a three-year-old and i just wasn't really listening to like digging as deep as i should yeah well those yeah. those by far and then the lineage episode of ghostface because i feel like as far as albums go uh with wu-tang i don't think he's put out a bad album i think there's some he's that the are rapper ever. yeah I, I feel like he's fallen off horribly but his his run from like wu-tang forever through pretty tony yeah to me it's like unfuck with a wolf yeah okay all right yeah guy to me like as far as albums go like i feel like he puts out the most quality because even after pretty tony um he did 
you know, fi uh, fish, more fish, but also Apollo Kids, which was 2010. Yeah. Apollo Kids was a really good underappreciated album. And it only had 10 songs, which I which I appreciate too. Where I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. The shorter the better. Uh, you ever hear the, I think it's like the wonderful world of Ghost Dini? I don't like that one. Where it's like, it's, no, really? Yeah. I love that one. That's like the R&B one. Like over the soul. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, you, we, me and Lang and always have this conversation. We're like, as soon as we hear singing on a hook, we're like, we're, I don't yeah. know, we're, we're such dickheads that we, if we don't hear cuts on that chorus, <laughs> we're that. <laughs> That's we're my like, favorite character in Ghostface, called. where he's like, you know, he's talking about like farting in the tub with the girl. Like, whenever he's doing <laughs> shit like that, that's my favorite ghost face. I mean, you know, I can't, I can't hate on that. So, uh, respect and then, that. So, two last quick things: the Terrifier franchise, our our love mm -hmm. of those. Uh, looking forward to Terrifier three. I think I'm going to make the prediction that once again, that's going to be the best horror movie of the year. Yeah. Uh, there's Without right, question. right. Um, I think right now, Open. Late Night with the Devil is on the top. I, I think that movie is absolutely fantastic. Uh, to me, I think that's the bar at the moment as far as best horror movies of the year. Maybe Oddity. Uh, and maybe I, I like Maxine a lot. I thought that too. So, but Maxine I, I, is good. Long legs. You didn't like Maxine? I, yeah, I was so disappointed in it. Did you like the other two? I liked, I loved X. Okay. Pearl, it, they there was diminishing returns on each one for me. So for me, they they got better as they went on. But really, yeah, and like we mentioned before, the beauty of that franchise that I noticed is that everyone has a different order. Some people love Pearl, you know. Yeah. Some people go Pearl, and that's great. So that you know, when uh, you yeah, have, I agree. I mean, there's something for people to, to grab onto. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then the last thing I want to mention was how ridiculous. Was it to see a set by Party Fun Action Committee? It was good times. I think I they, they had so many I, more. Songs. I miss them. They had so many more songs, like because that all just started like from them having these tapes. Okay, that were just chill. Like, we would go to Block's house, and he would be like, "Here's this song we did." It's like Boston assholes. Yeah, like you know, here's this shit that we did. Um, but can I add a couple horror movies to this? Yo, let's era? talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, I thought Long Legs was really dope. Um, Me too. Uh, I liked it, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was scary. Like that was a the problem I had. Like with, I always have a problem with like whenever critics like something, I know I'm not gonna like it. Like in horror, because they tend to like not be horror people. Yeah. Right. So they like they like the artsy shit, and which is cool if it's done right. But um, I thought Abigail was really good. I, I thought, thought so. it was fun. Yeah. Um, Great cast. A, it's funny. I gotta. I gotta interrupt. One of the lines you had, and I, I Midsommar is one of my. I love Midsommar. Yeah. <laughs> Some, except for <laughs> Hereditary, Ari Aster missed me with that shit. Or yeah, something. Me with that. something I, I love Hereditary, <laughs> and so funny. I I couldn't get with Midsummer. I mean, I probably <laughs> it again, but I, oh, yeah. I love that line though. So I, I love it too, and I'm vice versa. I think I like Midsummer more than Hereditary. Hereditary lost me at the that those last 10, 15 minutes. Like at first, like it felt like okay, it's like this like grief and like these people, but like once it like did that like weird like folklore type thing, <laughs> yeah. I was just like, and people were like, yeah, but she was like, what what did the everyone says is like, yeah, but her head or whatever movement she was making, I was like, I don't give a fuck about that yeah. shit. <laughs> I had the, for me it was that I was I watched it at my neighbor's house um and well my downstairs neighbor and I came up I came back upstairs so I was like walking through like the empty halls of my apartment building at like one in the morning like, oh yeah after watching that movie like fuck this is creepy and yeah. my wife and daughter were away that weekend so like I came in I, I went to sleep like you know that like when you fall into that drunken sleep where you're kind of asleep and I heard you know that sound that the kid made yeah and it, the shit out like it was like just you know obviously in my dream but i was like and that yeah. and that's that's great i it for yeah. movies to still do that it's fucking great it's um, the best like i i just want to have fun or be scared yeah sure yeah yeah, yeah. uh did you guys see low lives on um i did on tubi i did yeah i love that yes. one that I, I think i missed I, that so uh the guy that did influencer did that so yeah which oh, okay good. love that um i it, it, 
I and I knew like as I'm watching it, I knew that like I was like, I feel like something's gonna get super subversive. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh yeah, it's pretty good. Like if uh, Tubi, listen, Tubi is we've already covered how great Tubi is. It's it's like the land mm -hmm. of that every you know every 80s 90s movies that, that, that you forgot about is like living yeah. on tubi and it's fucking great well those are films that nobody else none of the big places are gonna ever bother carrying any of them so they keep that shit alive you know yeah. well you have an album cover actually um it was like the bronx war like it was like some sort of album cover it was like an the apocalypse album oh boombox uh, uh pop songs for the apocalypse yeah, it was mm. like a, it was like a mock up of a, of a, of an old movie. Do you remember? Yeah, it that? was. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, uh, the dude, I did the record with Jason Griff out of Chicago. He he just like sent it to me as a joke, and I was like, no, that's the cover. That's the cover. Like, yeah. That's what we're because he kept sending me all these other ones. I was like, no, nah, that's not it. And then he sent me that. He's like, what about this? I was like, yep. I got to dip into that. There's a couple yeah. of things that you put out recently that I got I got to listen to. So I we... I built that song that record after the Circle Jack Jerks uh, group sex. <laughs> like it's the same sort of like 15 uh, yeah. songs in 15 minutes yeah so it's all short songs yeah god damn tim you're the man you're still doing uh, it yeah thank uh, you for taking the time we we of could of course uh, man you know anytime you want to come back and just talk you know like whatever we'll do maybe we'll do like a terrifier three episode when we watch it let's do it man um that'd be great yeah. so yeah we're gonna we're gonna continue to bump the new album it's fucking fantastic genuinely brian texted me today and he's like, I think this yeah. might be in my top ten of the year so far. Wow, that's awesome for real. Yeah, mild for the night. I like, I like the kids. I feel seen. Like I feel <laughs> yeah. like that's my life <laughs> right now. I'm like, yeah. this guy is. This is my anthem right now. This yeah. is where I'm at. Love yeah, it. I'm watching cool. TV yeah. with the captions on and like all that shit. And yeah. seating at a concert. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I wrote that after going to see Souls of Mischief on like their 30th anniversary tour oh okay. at a place out in brooklyn and it was like a five and a half hour show and there wasn't a fucking seat in the place <laughs> was it oh, brooklyn sorry. monarch it was probably yeah, brooklyn monarch, monarch I yeah, think it was, yeah. yeah. Uh, no wait no it wasn't the monarch's a theater right no no monarch is just like a standing place oh it's just like a big warehouse right yeah yeah okay yeah then it was that yeah it was yeah. just like i thought i was gonna die they had <laughs> that, too many openers man you yeah. got to make sure you got good art support, new balances or whatever, oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, I got, I got my, like, fresh step art support because of my planner <laughs> fresh. Yeah, man. Uh, all right, guys. Yo, this was awesome. Yeah, we'll, thank we'll you, man. Again. I'll remember thank what you. links I was going to send you, Tim, but all right. Later. Okay, please. Appreciate it. Please. Right, take care, guys. Later. Later. Yo, this claims a murder mutant Sweater Jupiter or firefly The soy has turned to Hewitt's The failed institutions Smith Grove or Western Hills A nightmare of the new founding fathers Get your hypnosil This verse will get a kill count Shout to James Age and East The ABCs of death The twisted fresh is when you get your meat The tingler with electric seats Increase the pandemonium Night eats world There's no one left You're the only one Ash with the body armor Cronenberg the body horror Fuck the Baba Duke The kid is mama And her grief and trauma Watch a creature feature llama get it over last a pastor Give me off the clown, give me the Miles County Massacre Outside of hereditary, miss me with that army ass to give me basket case maniac or any cult classic Love watching slashers, Victor Crowley hatchet Or horse shack and Tommy cracking open Jason's casket Don't be scared I can do anything